McDonald's and beer. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today will be an unboxing, first impression review of the all new, all anticipated Uniformation GK3. Let's dive in. Just before we get started, Steve got a bit carried away and forgot to read any of the stats for the printer. So, really quick, the manufacturer's stated spec is it has a build plate of 300 millimeters by 160 millimeters by 300 millimeters tall as a 16k screen it can produce a layer thickness of 0.03 to 0.05 millimeters can print at two to three layers per second has a ball lead screw with linear rails either side and can heat the resin to 30 degrees c now back to steve i've seen people unboxing this very machine and it is a big big clumbersome machine so inside the box we have a box. Okay, a spare. I think there's just one in there. ACF film. We have the traditional uniformation leveling test strips. This is labeled GK2, so I don't think they have yet updated the, the labels for the new model. This is pre-release version. They're saying the same as they are for the GK2. The machine has been leveled already at the factory before delivery. A user manual. So there's basically set up instructions and a walkthrough saying lay heights, all that type of stuff. Chitsu box license key and quality assurance certificate. And now we have a big metal frame. I will need your assistance, Chris. So as you can see, very well packaged. Basically the frame is just screwed together with what appears to be self-tapping Phillips screws. So I'm just going to remove the screws. It is also very exciting. Yeah, this could be a test. So I might need you again, Chris. That is the way. This is the way. Sorry, Uniformation. I have destroyed your exceptionally well-packaged packaging. I might need you again. It is big. Let's have a look what we have here. So we have the active carbon filter, standard size. So this will be compatible across the range and able to purchase as a separate product. Winner, a very well-presented box of goodies as Uniformation always do gloves, a nice silicon funnel, Wi-Fi antenna, tools, nice branded Uniformation USB pen drive, some spare screws, silicon scraper, I love these, they are a great invention, a metal scraper, a nice Allen key, Torx driver, set of side cutters, and some filters, so build plate, really nice design, very nice handle. This will level in exactly the same way I assume as the, the GK2 will. If you are interested in purchasing the GK2 or any of the consumables or accessories, please check out the link in the description to let you know that we are an authorized UK uniformation stockist and supplier. All of our stock for these machines is UK based and if in stock is shipped the same day, with delivery the next day and it's backed by full UK support by email or phone. Just talk you through some of the findings that I'm seeing. Here we have a really really nice brush seal. I did actually wonder why this lid felt quite frictiony as I was lifting it up and there's a little bit of resistance. This is due to the fact that they are fitted brush seals. So when this is closed there's a nice air seal around the door to the frame stopping any nasty fumes from leaking from inside the the print enclosure nice the actual charcoal filter literally just pops into the back and holds in place with magnets i shall remove this piece of foam and i think we shall put in some power okay so as you can see we have a bit of rocking going on let me fix that here on the front corner of the machine there is a surface bubble this is for basically leveling the machine. So we basically, we can wind the feet. We are very nearly perfectly level. I would say that is done. The wobble now is in the table, not in the machine. So that's a nice feature. It's not critical. You don't need to level resin printers. All it's going to do is make sure that your resin sits in the vat equally. So you're not high to low one side, risking it spilling over the edge. We have another little piece of foam in here. We don't anymore. So, let's try and power it on. Ooh, it's alive. We have nice ambient lighting. It is very nice. It looks like a warm summer's glow. So, I think at this point, what I shall do is move the build plate up. Access movement. Okay, so on this UI, 
there's different increments we can move up or down in increments of one millimeter 10 millimeters or 100 millimeters so i shall send it up 100 millimeters it is very quiet very smooth i'm just trying to look at the actual drive mechanism because this is different to the gk2 so basically we have a ball lead screw on this side behind this cover and i'd imagine it'll be running up and down there on, on linear bearings i shall remove this huge lid for the vat oh i like it so this is a bit different to the gk2 we have these locky levers which are nice you can feel them most definitely click into place which is a nice touch so the machine is pre-installed with a screen protector that is the protective film over the screen protector a screen protector for the screen protector the vat sounds tuned perfectly like a drum I don't know if you can see this on camera. Here is a little silver plate. On the back side, we have another silver plate. So these are obviously connected. In the back of the machine, we have a, a spring-loaded brass contact, which would make me to assume that this has basically a function where we can determine how much resin is in the vat. Nice. So I shall pop that back into place, lock the levers, lift up the cam lever for the build plate, just like that. The vat claims that it will hold your standard 1 kg bottle or 1,000 grams, which is an awful lot of resin. We are using Elegoo's finest standard grey. The next party trick this machine has, resin tanks. Uniformation were very, very kind to send us two of these bad boys. I'm not 100% sure how it works. All I do know is it somehow pressurises itself after you fill it with resin, so you don't have to pump or or anything magical like that, we will fill one of these. Now these hold over a, a bottle, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, 1,300 grams. So I'll put a kilogram, a full bottle of resin in this, and I shall put another in the vat. That's a big print. I may need the funnel. I, I will use the funnel, and I will use some gloves. PPE rules. Don't forget that at home, kids. You can buy these full or empty, this one is labelled up. These are empty, by the way, but this is labelled up for biodegradable resin. Orange red. One of the key things to successful resin printing is to make sure that your resin is shaked or mixed thoroughly prior to using. The chemicals in it can settle to the bottom, giving you a very, very inconsistent one colour to print performance. So shaking is key. Shaken, not stirred. And when you have shaken, allow a little time to stand to allow the bubbles to migrate to the surface of the resin as this will again improve your printing experience so we shall insert the funnel anybody new to resin printing it is very very handy to keep a roll of paper towel whether it be blue towel like this kitchen roll anything on hand i shall pour the resin i can't see a puddle forming underneath the bottle which is a, a positive sign i'll give the the funnel a little tap just to get rid of any of the, the excess that is lurking in there. And then I shall proceed to fit the lid. Well, that was a pain-free, clean and easy experience, to be fair. Nothing's leaking. Our cartridge is now holding a full bottle of resin. I will remove my gloves, put the lid down. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put in another bottle. So with this one, we do have a line on the vat. And it is important not to fill it over that line. Because otherwise you'll flood your machine. Which I have to say... The line that they have marked on the vat is bang on. That is exactly one bottle of resin. I will try and move everything out of the way because yes, boys and girls, we have more. So I will first of all, close the lid, make room. We also have Uniformation Cure 3, a ginormous turntable and a microwave oven. We have lots of protective film more filters and another filter a power lead a screwdriver i'm impressed a certificate and a little screw the little screw is for the build plate we will get to that in a second foam more foam so i'll get a close-up of this if you look in the center we have a little keyed cut out the shaft in the machine is also keyed helping this to rotate without spinning freely I'm not sure which way up we go. We have a frosty side. We have a smooth side. I would probably surmise that the smooth side is going to face up because this will be easier to wipe and clean opposed to the frosty side. Pop that into place. Snug that down. Don't over tighten it because you don't want to crack 
anything. There's no need for it to be overly tight. It's not going to get shaken around everywhere. It's merely going to rotate in a nice, slow, circular motion. Filters. We have two of these bad boys. They're all the same size. These ones have a grill vent. So the only difference that I can see is this filter that goes on the printer basically sucks the air in and blows it back out. It replaces the air inside the actual chamber. This filter, however, has a vent. So the air sucked in here, blowing out there clean. Pop into the back of the machine. The machine only takes one, so we have a spare. Turn on the switch. What we can do with this, quite astoundingly, is dry our parts prior to curing them. Dual purpose. I'll just set the ball in motion. That is drying. No lights. I'm going to feel what we have. We do have a heated element blowing warm air into the chamber as the turntable rotates. Going back to the, the GK3 Ultra. Before we slice the file, I'll just talk you through some of the features that I'm seeing. So on the UI, I'm currently seeing, we've got the, the temperature, which is currently reading at 25.9 degrees C. It's also given me a volume of resin in said vat of 939 millimeters. So it's basically use that little contact plate that I mentioned before in the video to measure the amount of resin we've currently got in the vat. We also have this resin in reserve which will top up as needed. So I think at that point, we shall cut here while I prepare some files to print. Later. We're back. I basically sliced a very small model, multiple parts from one of the Titan Forge files. I think it was Cyberforge. It looks like a, a robotic mech type warrior thing. Just so everybody is clear, this machine will work with lighter slicer, Chitu box, and also uniformation slicer. My go-to is Lychee. I've literally sliced these files, supported them, sliced them at default settings that are already there in the slicer. I have not tweaked anything. The print time for this was three hours, 13 minutes. So not a long time, but overall it's not a very high print. I think the, the print layer count was 896 layers. I didn't want to go big first off, First print, there was no test file. So instead of wasting a load of resin time and everything else, I chose something small. So we will now take a look at the print. One key feature I really, really like about this machine, which I am going to show right now. We can leave the models stuck to the build plate. The build plate su suspended over the vat. All the excess resin flows nicely back into the vat, saving as little waste as possible. Another win for uniformation. Uniformation are very, very good. They look at things that can be improved over standard machines, little quirky things that they can implement into the design to make things easier, better, cleaner. That is just another one of them. So I think what we shall do now is I will wait for that to drain for a little while. I will remove the parts from the build plate. First look, everything is exactly how it should be. We will get these removed from the build plate, throw them in the cleaner, and then we will do a demo for the dryer and curing station. So far, so good. So currently what we have done is we do not yet have the, the large washer. As far as I'm aware, it is still in development. Early releases of it have been put out, but we have not yet received it. So we have just washed the parts in the, the standard wash unit that you can purchase with the GK2. The link for that product is in the description below. The only downside to that is, obviously this machine is capable of printing very big prints. I printed little parts. They fit in that washer absolutely perfectly. Not a problem at all. So I'm just letting them basically drain the majority of the IPA off them before I go and transfer them into the curing unit. Now we're going to proceed to bake them in the oven. It's basically spreading these out quite wide apart. We have plenty of room in here, so there's no need to clutter everything together. I shall close the lid. And now I am going to increase the drying time. So I think we will we'll try, I think four minutes to dry. Let's open the box. Ooh. These parts are dry and cured really nicely. Overall, I would call that a resounding success. Right, so we will remove the supports, assemble the model and provide some close-up shots once we have done so. But in the meantime, before we even get to that point, these are sliced at 0.05 lay height. This machine is capable of printing many, many times lower than that. Overall, at that layer height, these are 100% acceptable quality to paint right now. I can't see 
any issues I will bring this in for a close-up so you can see inside the cockpit nothing in my mind wrong with that print at all and I say this is default settings we could dial the machine in and probably improve this quality even further so we will clean this up we will assemble it and we will post some pictures which will be revolving on your screen anytime now so in summary the brief overview of this machine and the, the curing station we'll start with the machine uniformation have absolutely blown it out of the park we've got all the usual refinements that anybody used to the gk2 will be used to so this includes the heated vat this vat fits slightly different to the gk2 it has basically two levers that you slide either side of the vat to lock the vat into place the cam locking lever build plate again a nice touch the screen is obviously a lot bigger than the gk2 screen but replacing it looks exactly the same really really easy really really user intuitive you remove the screws you'll unplug the cable you'll replace the screen when you need to do this the UI is exactly the same as the GK2. The other advantage is we have got the autofill resin system, so the machine's capable of holding over two litres of resin. We've also got the nice feature at the side of the machine where we can allow the bill plate to drain the resin back into the vat once the print is finished. We have the active carbon filter based on the back of the machine. We've had this printing in the studio. It is relatively hot today. If we were going to get any issue with fumes, today would be the day. We have smelt nothing at all. The curing station, again, they've added this charcoal filter to the back of this machine to basically vent any IPA resin fumes and whatever else that you're going to get from baking it and then curing it. I've not smelled any IPA other than when I pulled these prints out of the actual ultrasonic cleaner. While it was cooking away in, in the curing unit, nothing at all these are two very very capable units that you could use in your, your study your workshop wherever you choose to set these machines up the other thing that we noticed incredibly quiet you don't really hear this machine whirring away in the background at all that is my initial first thoughts and overview of this machine really really impressed i wouldn't really expect anything else from uniformation to be fair i do admire the fact that they will take the time with products i'm seriously impressed because up to now i have not seen anything negative with with this machine at all it works the slicer profiles work the machine just works simply out of the box you saw we set it up we plugged it in we filled resin we sliced the file we put the usb stick into the machine we pressed print three hours and whatever minutes later the print was done we've removed it we've washed it we've cured it what more can i say so overall really really impressed by this machine please be sure to keep checking our website where you will be able to pre-order this machine going forward and should you have any questions regarding this machine or any other machine please drop your question in the comments box below and be sure please to like subscribe and share we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.